Moroccan airmen scan the landscape below for earthquake survivors. The remains of villages have been crushed back into the hillsides are inaccessible by land. Some so remote that aid is dropped from the sky. Below, the search for survivors is turning to recovery of the dead. So since the day that we arrived here, we, we found uh, more than 200 dead bodies and we, we saved uh, 153. The helicopter collects more of the quake's victims, leaving homes that no longer exist. There are many areas yet to see government help in these foothills. The further you get into the foothills of the Atlas Mountains, whether by air or on foot, the more one finds scenes like this. Locals tell us that two people were killed when these three homes were flattened. The death toll has climbed to more than 2,900 now, as the poorest, the most isolated, are getting counted. And as one gets into these remote villages and you look back down the hillside, you get the really strong impression of the giant steps of this quake stamping on villages as it runs down the slopes. Climbing further, we come across a desperate search for buried savings. All that remains when Ahmed's home collapsed. The catastrophe killed his 10-year-old niece, Hakima. He tells me, I lost my niece, my brother lives in the house just above us. When the earthquake struck, the roof of the house flattened all the way to the ground. I went and pulled her out under the rubble. What is the future for you? He says, I want to rebuild my house, but everything has been lost. I want to stay in my village. I don't want to leave it. I'm committed to staying on my land. But with his livestock dead and Ahmed's life so shattered, the question he can't answer is, how? Sam Kiley, CNN, in Tafakhacht.